Tail sitter designs are a really simple and elegant solution to the challenges of vertical takeoff and landing or VTOL aircraft. Rather than dedicated lifting motors or mechanically complex rotor tilting mechanisms, they rely on the fact that you can just reorient the whole vehicle 90 degrees to transition from hover to forward flight and back. No additional moving parts aside from the motors and control services that an airplane would require anyways. Tail sitter VTOLs are so easy in fact that I built this bicopter wing in only an hour or so. All it is is a piece of foam that I cut out by eye and glued some electronics to. So how do you control one of these? Specifically, how do you control one through transition from hover like a helicopter to forward flight like an airplane? That sounds like a simple question with a simple answer. Just pitch it over 90 degrees and let it gain some airspeed until the wing starts providing lift. I made this video to explain why transitioning a tail sitter VTOL is actually kind of difficult. Let's not forget that a VTOL like this requires active stabilization from a flight controller in order to hover at all. Let me turn the stabilization off entirely mid-flight and see what happens. So clearly we're not just directly in control of a VTOL and it's not quite as simple as just making it pitch over 90 degrees. We need a way to tell the flight controller how to do that. The flight controller is parsing our inputs and doing some magic in order to keep the thing steady in the air. More specifically, our radio inputs correspond to desired roll and pitch angles, and the flight controller computes the necessary motor speeds and control service angles to achieve those set points. This is known as attitude command level of control, which is what I'll be focusing on in this video. There's a different type of control known as rate command, where instead of angles, we command angular rates. This is what all the racing drones use to do all those crazy maneuvers, at the expense of it being a bit more difficult to fly. With attitude control, if our hands are off the control sticks and the flight controller senses a disturbance, it'll try to correct by adjusting the control services because remember, hands off the sticks corresponds to zero commanded angle. The flight controller computes its output as a function of the error between the command and the measurement to drive the error towards zero. In hover, differential motor RPM provides roll control, tilting both control services in the same direction provides pitch control by deflecting the motor's thrust, and tilting the control services in opposing directions provides yaw control. These output combinations are specified in the control mixer of the flight controller, where arbitrary stabilized variables about each rotational axis are assigned and added to each actuator output to produce the responses I just described. Now assume we want to have attitude command control in forward flight too. We know that for pitch control, both services need to tilt in the same direction, same as in hover. But for roll, the services need to tilt in opposite directions, and yaw can be controlled by differential motor RPM. If you were listening carefully, you've probably realized that the means of controlling roll and yaw have flipped between hover and forward flight. This is problem number one in creating a smooth transition between hover and forward flight for an attitude command tail sitter. Roll becomes yaw, and yaw becomes roll. So I realized that was probably really confusing, so I just want to show you exactly what I'm talking about. I've got this configured for hover right now, so if I give a yaw input, the control services will correctly move to try and make it yaw around. Now, if I just pitch this over into forward flight and give that same input, this is actually causing a roll in forward flight. To fix this, we can simply peek into the control mixer code and reassign the outputs to the motors and servos to give the correct motions based on if we want to be in hover or forward flight. So I toggle between those two flight modes with this switch here. So in hover, if I give it a yaw, it correctly yaws. Now I'll pitch it over and hit that switch. Giving a yaw doesn't cause a roll anymore. Giving a roll causes a roll. This seems to have fixed our problem, so let's go try a transition outside. What the heck happened? Well, we correctly remapped the controls for our two different flight modes, but one thing we forgot is that we also want to be pitching over 90 degrees from level. When I hit my switch to transition to forward flight, the flight controller kept measuring zero degrees in roll and pitch, only now, it wasn't moving the motors and surfaces in the correct ways to maintain zero degrees level anymore. For example, it measured a roll disturbance, but moved the servos to create a yawing moment, making it fall out of the sky even faster. So what we really want to do is switch our frame of reference between hover and forward flight too. This is problem number two in creating a smooth transition between hover and forward flight for an attitude command tail sitter. The concept of zero degrees level changes between the two flight modes. The IMU on the flight controller is what senses the orientation of the vehicle that the attitude command controller ultimately tries to stabilize on. It measures the orientation with a combination of gyros and accelerometers. Gyros tell it which direction and how fast it's rotating, and the accelerometers help it understand what direction down is. 
neither of which can reliably tell you what your true orientation in space is. These measurements must be combined with a fancy algorithm to calculate absolute angles with respect to level. One trick we can do with this fancy algorithm is to specify a reference attitude from which to compute these angles. So for hover, we can say that we want the output to tell us the roll and pitch in degrees from an orientation with the nose facing up. For forward flight, we say that we want the reported roll and pitch angles from an orientation with the nose facing forward. We need to do this because the flight controller is rigidly attached to the body as it tilts and doesn't necessarily understand how to use its IMU measurements to give these angles as it self rotates, unless we explicitly tell it what's going on. Trust me, I'm an engineer. I coded this up and linked it to that switch I set up for the control mixing changes. So in hover, we correctly measure the pitch angle from level. If I pitch over 90 degrees without hitting the switch, the reported pitch angle is 90 degrees from the hover orientation. But when I hit the switch, the reported angle is now zeroed and with respect to the forward flight orientation and roll angles are measured correctly too. So let's go fly it now. But first I want to thank the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. PCBWay is an awesome manufacturing service that I've personally used for many of my projects in the past. On their website, you can select from many manufacturing options like 3D printing, CNC machining, and of course, PCB manufacturing. This is a great option for makers that don't have access to certain tools. I don't have a CNC machine, so PCBWay helped me make these small aluminum pieces for an upcoming project. They also made these cool little PCBs for another upcoming project. Be sure to check out the link to their website down in the description. Supporting PCBWay supports my channel as well. And now back to flight testing. Let's see if that orientation adjustment fixed our transition problems. Now when I hit the switch to change from hover mode to airplane mode, the thing immediately snaps over 90 degrees and starts flying forward like an airplane, with me providing roll and pitch angle commands to fly it around. But in forward flight, we get these nasty oscillations, less commonly known as the oscillies. This is problem number three in creating a smooth transition between hover and forward flight for an attitude command tail sitter. The controller gains for hover will generally be much higher than the gains for forward flight meaning the control services don't need to move as much in airplane mode as compared to hover mode. To fix this, I just tune two sets of controller gains for each flight mode and switch between them in the code accordingly with my switch. This gives much smoother forward flight. The reason it snaps over so violently, even though I didn't even give it a pitch command, is that when I hit the switch to change the reference orientation while we're still in hover orientation, the pitch controller immediately sees that our pitch angle is 90 degrees from the new level. So, it aggressively tries to deflect the control services to drive the pitch error to zero. The same thing happens in reverse going from forward flight to hover. It's really quite fun to toggle between these two flight modes, and the satisfaction of getting this stuff working is why I'm so obsessed with VTOLs. So now we've got transition and forward flight figured out for a tail sitter. Maybe it wasn't quite as easy as we initially thought, but I still wouldn't consider these abrupt and rather violent transitions to be optimized. So that brings us to problem number four in creating a smooth transition between hover and forward flight for an attitude command tail sitter, actually making the transition smooth. To do this, all we're gonna do is a little code magic to take our binary transition switch input and have it fade between the values of zero for hover and one for forward flight. We can dial in the speed of this fading to taste later. We'll then use this variable to fade between the hover and forward flight mixing we configured earlier. When this variable has a value of zero, we're in hover mode, and only this side of the code results in non-zero output. This is the hover mixing. When this variable has a value of one, we're in forward flight mode, and only this side of the code results in non-zero output. This is the forward flight mixing. As the variable fades between zero and one, the mixed output for the motors and servos becomes a linear combination of the two distinct sets of mixing. We're just interpolating our control mixing through the transition. I did the same thing for hover and forward flight control gains, and also made the reference attitude slowly fade at the same rate. Now let's go see that transition. As expected, we now get a smooth transition from hover to forward flight when I hit the switch on my transmitter. Note that that's really the only thing I do to make this nice transition happen. I don't need to jam the pitch stick forward to manually pitch it over. I just get it into a nice steady hover, hit the switch, and wait a few seconds for it to turn into an airplane. Once that's done, I can use throttle to speed up or command a pitch angle to climb. Turning is super easy because all I need to do is move my stick to make it bank. When I'm done with the turn, I let go of the roll stick and it'll return to level automatically, since a centered roll stick commands a zero degree roll angle in the flight controller. This almost makes flying it feel like cheating. I'm working on a slightly larger tail sitter project and this project was a stepping stone toward getting that one working. So if you enjoyed following along with my problem solving process on this rather unimpressive piece of foam, 
you might want to subscribe to see these same principles applied to a much cooler platform in a future video. Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video, and thanks to all my awesome patrons over on Patreon for their support on projects just like these. Cheers. Whoops. <laughs>